Hi guys, this is GSNLone.com and I'm here with the Sony Xperia XA1 for a full review. The Sony Xperia XA was great when we tested it uh, this uh, winter, or better said last winter, and now it's time for the Sony Xperia XA1. We already reviewed the XA1 Ultra, so let's see the smaller one, which came at Mobile World Congress 2017. It also has the edge-to-edge -edge approach, but at a smaller diagonal. So we're dealing here with a 5 incher but very long and narrow and it's priced at around $300 on Amazon right now. You can find it in white, black, gold or pink and this 5 incher is uh, pretty comfy. It's got small buttons on the side, volume, power and the camera but even though they're small they're pretty comfy. It's got an angular design, typical Xperia so you cannot find curves here, no curves just straight edges and corners angular and typical for sony it's got a polycarbonate covered back and what should be a metal frame on the sides keeping things together and up front a very narrow edge screen on the sides plus a bigger than usual top and bottom bezel so you can grip it and play games and watch videos. 8 millimeters in thickness, weighs 143 grams, pretty solid build so nothing bad to say as far as the build and design are concerned. Now the screen is a 5 incher with an IPS LCD panel, 16 to 9 aspect and a 720p resolution. I was actually expecting full HD but no luck. We got Gorilla Glass protection, those narrow bezels and the actual viewing experience will be put to the test in the video app which just sampled you with a trace of lag. Here we go. Now this is the viewing experience. As you can see the colors are a bit on the vivid side. Uh, we got very crisp image for 720p. The brightness is quite good. We got wide view angles, typical for an IPS. And contrast was not bad in the incredibly strong August sun. Of course you got a variety of options like audio setting, display settings. We'll cover them when the time comes. Now speaking of the screen, we can also talk about the RGB stripes pixel arrangement and we can do that in the dedicated folder. This is what the screen looks like under the microscope, RGB stripes pixel setup. And we also measure the brightness achieving a top level of 472 lux units, which is quite solid. It's good, but it's no Xperia XA1 Ultra, which goes all the way to 611 lux. Anyway, this result beats the uh, Moto G5 and uh, the Huawei P10 Lite for example. But it scores below the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 and also the Sony Xperia X Compact. Obviously Sony included its usual array of options. We go here, we got brightness level, we've got adaptive brightness, sleep, smart backlight, image enhancement, typical and super vivid mode if you want even more vivid colors, white balance with three sliders R, G, B, system icons, display size, font size and that's about it. A pretty solid screen in my book and now let's go to the CPU and other hardware. So first things first, let's see what CPU we're dealing with here. Uh, we're dealing with a familiar face, is the Octa-Core MediaTek Helio P20. After all, the XA before it had the P10, obvious evolution. We get three gigabytes of RAM here, as well as 32 gigabytes of storage, plus an add in this application. So Helio P20, three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, micro SD card slot. And even though it seems we're dealing with a pretty fine phone performance wise, every once in a while you run into some lag. You didn't see any here, but believe me, after a long while, and especially if it's very hot, outside and if you're using all the hardcore camera features lag is going to appear and uh, we also did a uh, gaming test in Riptide GP Renegade and let's see how that panned out so first things first Riptide GP Renegade or benchmark game recently turned one year old still keeping it tight if I were to say another benchmark game it have to be Asphalt Extreme it's hardcore high-end graphics runs on everything but still does not feel like a huge upgrade from Asphalt 8. That one is still one of the best looking racing games on mobile. And here we are. Looking hot so far. Responsive controls. Actually very sensitive in a good way. Nice water fountains. Loving the way the water looks. Of course it's a smaller screen, a smaller resolution but the gaming checks out also thanks to those big bezels top and bottom. Gaming is okay and let's see what we achieved in benchmarks because yes we also did those so let's see what's happening here. We got the usual battery of tests, we got Quadrant, we got Antutu, Nenamark, 
uh, and more Geekbench, GFX Bench, you know the works. Now easier to find, hopefully. Here we go. Looking for the benchmarks. This is on Tutu. And in Antutu we score 59k points, which places us above the Huawei P10 Lite and the Motorola Moto M, but also below the Lenovo Vibe X3 and the LG Nexus 5X. In Quadrant we did some crazy scores, we surpassed the HTC 10 and OnePlus 3, but I doubt it was uh, well optimized, that one. This is the 3D Mark Ice Storm Unlimited test, it's actually quite good, because it surpassed the 10k mark. And that's okay for a mid-ranger, it beats the Huawei Honor 7 and LG G Flex but scores below the Xperia Z3 and the Huawei Nova Plus, so that's about it. In general, uh, we scored some reasonable performances in these tests, you can see more scores here. We beat the Sony Xperia X performance in the multi-core test in Geekbench 4 and that's no small feat. So okay for mid-ranger, some lag every once in a while, and let's see how we did in the temperature area. We scored 39.1 degrees Celsius in both the GFX bench test and Riptide GP Renegade, so there is no overheating here, but we're close to the limit. And in the summer, the phone gets very hot after a prolonged period of usage. Now, on the battery front, this little fellow has a 2300 mAh unit, lithium ion, and uh, it comes with QNovo adaptive charging and MediaTek Pump Express uh, 2.0. Now, of course, we also did some charging tests and, of course, the video playback test, which will take me a while to find. You can already feel it. Okie dokie, so we're looking for the HD video playback in a loop test. We start to play a sample. And here we go. We achieved 10 hours, 28 minutes of continuous video playback. Not bad, basically one whole season of TV shows. It's superior to the Sony Xperia XZ Premium and the LG G5, both flagships, but scores below the Galaxy S6 Edge and the iPhone 6. Now in PC Mark, that's the score we achieved. The work battery life, 7 hours and 40 9 minutes, not bad, actually quite on the good side, it beats the Xiaomi Mi 5 and the Motorola Moto G5, but scores below the Lenovo Vive X3 and the Nubia N1. Charging requires 2 hours and 38 minutes, a bit on the long side, but reasonable for a mid-ranger, it beats the Amazon Fire Phone, and after 15 minutes of charging you're at 12%, after 1 hour, 55%. Of course, you'll be treated to some battery saving features, the usual stamina mode and ultra stamina mode, the latter letting you only use those basic apps from the list, everything else is cut. Now on the acoustics front, like the Xperia XA1 Ultra, this one has two slits at the front, one here and one here, they are not for speakers, nope, they're just for design, the only speaker is actually here at the bottom. And uh, we're treated to the music app, which is the um, grand daughter or grandson of the Sony Walkman application, comes with Spotify integration and a pretty decent amount of settings, clear audio plus, effects, equalizer, surround, genre, five custom channels, clear bass, xloud, and xloud actually works, it really made listening louder. And let's listen to some tunes. And now the conclusions. Now as far as the experience is concerned, the volume was quite loud, uh, there was no vibration at the back, no distortion, good bass, good high notes, and we didn't have any headphones bundled with our test unit. Uh, we do have FM radio, in case you're wondering, it's here somewhere, and I felt that the maximum volume feature a bit of, uh, let's say, noise. Uh, you can actually feel the speaker vibrating in a metallic way anyways, only at max volume. Now we did a decibel meter test and the results were quite good. So actually achieved two sets of results. The first one is 86.1 decibels, achieved at the front and back with an acoustic sample, beating the HTC U11, not bad, and the second one is this one, achieved in the Riptide GP Renegade, 95, excuse me, 97.5 decibels, very good, superior to the Galaxy S8 and the Huawei P10 Plus. Good acoustics all around and it's time to talk about the camera. 
we are being promised flagship level camera on a mid-ranger that's the motto that sony uses here so 23 megapixels led flash xmor rs sensor hybrid autofocus f2.0 aperture and steady shot while at the front 8 megapixel shooter for the selfies and f2.0 aperture again the camera app oh i've seen it so many times takes a while to open takes a while to take shots it's a bit sluggish that's for sure options are typical you got your color and brightness you got your resolution you got your object tracking your superior auto extras offered by the manual mode white balance exposure shutter focus and uh, once again this uh, exposure slider here plus your video capture which only goes up to full hd 30 frames per second and also hdr and that's about it plus a few more apps at the top now we go straight to the gallery to see how the camera did and we have over 200 items to show you which is mighty impressive before you see the shots be warned be advised it was a very very sunny day 35 plus degrees celsius and there are a few shots which are burnt because of that uh, the experience is not hugely different from what we saw on the sony xperia xa1 ultra the thing is that the colors are a bit better calibrated even though we do have burn this time the hue of green is not as lit as it was on the bigger version the selfies are okay talking about my skin texture hair texture even the background i'm very happy with the selfies achieved here and yes the hue of green is still burned and not exactly calibrated to the us rgb standard and let's go to more colorful areas with this being a 23 megapixel camera you can obviously have a lot of detail in the distance and a lot of details close up but some of the colors are not very well aligned with the standard excellent close-up shots a lot of details but this green is closer to cyan than actual green the grass is burnt and things in the distance will be even more burnt by the summer sun so maybe in the future improved dynamic range would be an idea a bunch more selfies here happy with the texture of the skin eyes and hair some of the most natural looking eyes i've seen on a front camera and a few more shots attempts at flower macros some of them blurry for some reason typical from a large resolution sensor for sony takes a while to focus in close-ups but the results in the end are quite good when you do actually manage to focus pretty impressive some burn here and there but not as bad as the as on the bigger model okay colors minus the green great texture and details that's something to remember i feel that this captures put the phone on par with the samsung galaxy a5 2017 and i even felt a slight trace of over sharpening and that's HDR in action maybe a bit too much so it reminds me of the Lenovo Vibe X3 and maybe the latest Galaxy A5 from Samsung and a slight bit of the Asus Zenfone 3 but with less um, better calibrated colors and now on the nighttime shots we took some low light samples here and I have to say we get one of the best flashes I've seen lately this flash actually works light stuff up but doesn't cover it and doesn't shower it with blue or white pretty good clarity during the night not bad brightness doesn't exaggerate the street light halos the zoom is rather poor so not many details when you start to zoom in a bit darker than other phones out there even mid-rangers but overall i'm happy with the quality and i would put this on par with the huawei p10 light during the low light capture now let's go to the video area we film in full hd mp4 30 frames per second and 70 mega per second bitrate so i'm not going to resort to the album app anymore i'm just going to keep it old school use videos and this is not a video shot with this phone but uh, this one is okay so first things first image is burnt that's for sure I kept repeating that word because it's true if it's summer and this phone has to face the heat and the sun it will have problems in the shade it produces good colors calibrates the exposure correctly nice dynamic range but in the sun some problems may appear i'm happy with the clarity we achieved here and the exposure change when coming from the shade to the sun and vice versa not bad details thanks to the large resolution pretty good microphone minus the windy areas and we shot an hdr clip but is a bit too yellow for my taste we even tested the image stabilization by walking up and down a set of stairs 
this is actually after the stairs and that's the walk we had color me impressed steady shot does it again pretty good stabilization for a $300 phone okay so good filming overall for a mid-range phone good filming also in close-up minus the burn and uh, some refocusing every here and there and the HDR being unimpressive it checks out and it's able to fight uh, against the Galaxy A5 2017, Zenfone 3 and uh, the Huawei. Now let's see why the low light video is also important. That's the nighttime filming. So pretty okay brightness, a bit of flickering and refocusing here and there. If you start to zoom in things get grainy. Object tracking was rather acceptable, not bad microphone, reasonable colors. A bit yellow, the halos of the street lights are a bit big as well but much less blue and yellow hues affecting the shots unlike other handsets we've seen out there so for example last year the xperia xz and xperia x compact suffered from blue hues this one doesn't once again it can fight the latest huawei p10 light phones and p9 light on equal terms now we're done with the cameras keep in mind the good selfies the good video capture and stabilization on the browser front this is chrome chrome is pre-installed and let's go to gsn1.com with not a very speedy approach the results confirm it not impressive in sun spider and moderately impressive in velamo and if you want input that's done via swift key with swipe included and pretty well spaced keyboard. Now on the connectivity front, this handset is available in a single SIM and dual SIM version with a nano SIM card slot and we get all the connectivity you need. There's LT category 6, GPS, GLONASS, Google Cast, Wi-Fi, Miracast, NFC, USB Type-C port at the bottom, Bluetooth 4.2 and the calls were quite loud and clear. Good noise cancelling too. We also did a speed test and let's see how that panned out. So, we achieved 106 mega per second downloads on 4G and 47 mega per second uploads on Wi Fi 76 and 25 respectively, so quite fine. We are done with connectivity. Time to talk about the OS, UI, and so forth. So, this is Android Nuga with the typical Xperia UI on top. This means you get a lot of side menus, a lot of gloss, a lot of white, and some of the elements you encounter on the PlayStation, on the Sony. TV sets on the Sony Blu-ray players, they have this identity that is applied to all of their products, phones, tablets and more, uh, anyways they're not doing tablets anymore. Okay, so settings, you get icon size, icon appearance, names, transitions and so forth. You saw the widgets already, multitasking, carousel and as far as I know, there's no split screen here but let's actually clean, clean stuff, we have a clear all option luckily drop down section notifications and quick settings so stock and for those of you wondering nope there's no fingerprint scanner here typical options connectivity themes wallpaper display notifications sound battery etc okay so that's the experience in a nutshell leftmost home screen dedicated to google now now let's see the apps now as far as the pre-installed apps are concerned i counted them there's 43 of them may sound like a lot but if you want to do some uninstalling you can do it you got this small axis showing you what you can uninstall and there's quite a lot of them anyways that's good news and among the apps i want to remind you of there's playstation what's new email weather amazon shopping avg for antivirus sketch for editing photo editing on the go movie creator spotify and that's about it we have reached the end of the review i saw you enjoyed the review of the sony xperia xa1 ultra this is the smaller one the xperia xa1 the 5 incher with a penchant for good selfies and some gaming if held like this now on the pro side it's still a pretty phone and a pretty original proposal for this format although it's kind of long for a 5 incher it's got a solid screen talking about brightness and color calibration okay benchmarks good battery quite loud good details and selfies when talking about the camera nice close-ups and nighttime shots okay stabilization and we're getting android nuga here which is not bad now on the con side it's a bit too long for its diagonal it's got some lag every now and then the hue of green is burnt in the shots and videos um, not big video capture upgrade from the xperia xa which also filmed godly for its price range and no fingerprint scanner and no stereo acoustics i would say that 300 bucks 
just about covers it and once it drops to 250 it's instantly a best buy mid-range phone so proper price for the proper hardware nice for video capture selfies regular pictures and some gaming on the go with this ideal compact format this is basically a cool phone for teenager and my only regret is the lack of stereo speakers other than that I'm guessing that maybe the camera gets fixed with a patch in the future. This is from us, this feels like sort of a almost rival for the Asus Zenfone 3 but clear rival for the Huawei P10 Lite. Bye bye!